Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. The next series of videos are going to be all about WBPP, the script, in PixInsight. It's the most powerful script, I would argue, within the program, and it's one that I've been covering uh, for a long time now, though I've been doing it incrementally. That is, as the script has evolved, I make you know new videos that cover new features and changes within uh, its application. That is difficult to kind of keep up with, and it's, make, it's made it a little unwieldy, not only for me to keep up with things, but also uh, for people to kind of digest that information. If you're a first-time user, uh, you're going to have to go through that kind of evolution along with me as I made those videos through time. So, today, I am now going to assemble a lot of this information. Most of it will be new. I'm going to still cover some of the topics that I did previously, but now with the new version of uh, WBPP. And then I'm also going to incorporate some of the videos that I've already made where they are concept videos. Uh, that is, the, the thing that I'm talking about really isn't affected by the version of WBPP. It may have a new you know, place or a new uh, thing to press, but it's basically uh, ultimately the same thing. So I'm reorganizing things. This is going to be a completely new uh, kind of release of information. And I want to begin with an introduction. In the next section, we're going to take a tour. And within that tour, I am literally going to go through, you know, the entire user interface, just so you can get a sense of where everything is and how everything kind of hangs together. Uh, but first, I want to do an even higher level introduction to the script. Uh, and one of the things that I would propose is actually a new name. Now, right now, WBPP is called the Weighted Batch Preprocessing Script. But I think it's lived, outlived that name in the sense that pre-processing really just refers to the calibration of data, which is what it used to do in the past. Now it does much more. It does what we would call the calibration part, but also a lot of the post-processing parts. Uh, and that means that it has become a pipeline of sorts in uh, computing uh, parlance. A pipeline is something where you have a linear set of tasks that you're going to perform. And that's exactly what WBPP is doing. It has a linear set of processes, the same processes that are in PixInsight with all of their parameters and so on. Uh, you get to configure, but it, then it goes through those processes to ultimately calibrate the data and do what we'll call post-processing, which is uh, the registration of the data, normalization, and ultimately the integration of your files. So the script is really doing a pipeline of work and it is all configurable to do all kinds of things that you would want it to do. That adds to complexity but it also makes it a very very flexible tool. So with that in mind the first thing I want to say about this tool is that there are no defaults. One of the things that um, in the past there was built into the tool a presumption of logic. That is that there was an implied sense in the way in which you would use the tool. And there still is, you know, sensible logic within WBPP in the terms of the order of uh, certain kinds of steps that you might take because it just doesn't make sense to do it in any other way. But the thing that's really important as a configurable thing, it means that when there is a problem, the problem is either in the configuration, the way that it was originally set up, or, and there's another version of this problem, which is that there may be something with the data that was fed into the process, fed into the pipeline, that has prevented, you know, uh, WBPP from basically doing its job. Those are two different kinds of things to look for. The first one, a configuration problem, could be, I'll just give you an example, it could be uh, you told WBPP to use the wrong dark frame or the wrong flat fields for whatever reason, somehow, uh, to calibrate your data. That's a configuration problem. You just change, uh, you know, the files that you're pointing at or you change some matching criteria and then everything makes sense. Uh, and that's easy to tell because one of the strengths of WBPP is that it communicates with you in so many different ways. This has been a big thrust of the development of the script. And I'll just point out the fact that there is an initial screen in what we would call the calibration screen where it shows you check marks. It shows you the matching of things. It shows you all of the settings of each of the groups that you might be operating on. And in addition, if that wasn't enough, then it 
uh, WBPP also communicates in another way where it'll show you calibration diagrams. It literally shows you this is the file that is currently configured, these are the files that are going to calibrate the data, and this is going to be the result. So from that kind of information, configuration errors can be minimized. Um, and a, another nice feature of WBPP is that uh, in the diagnostic button, you can generate screenshots of all the screens. So it used to be that you would try to explain what the problem was, um, and usually it didn't have enough information. Uh, usually the problem that people would say is, you know, WBPP didn't do something. And that was it. I mean, it just didn't do something. That's not very useful. So you had to diagnose and try to figure out what it was. Well, one of the very first things that you would want to do is look at the configuration because that's one of the possible issues that can be um, something that can be easily uh, resolved. So uh, when you press on the diagnostics button, now you can get all the screenshots instantly and you can share that with people online um, and then they can look at it and say, probably very quickly if there is a configuration particular error. The other one though is trickier, right? Because the data is unique to you. Um, and I'll just say an example of a data problem and there are untold numbers of different ways in which you can get errors that are due to the data. But let's say you fed WBPP some kind of data where due to an error, of some sort, maybe a calibration problem. It could be uh, you didn't highlight the correct files. You gave it dark frames instead of light frames. I don't know what it is, but there are no stars in the data. And when WBPP gets to the point of trying to align images and it doesn't detect any stars, there's going to be a problem. Now that's a data problem. That's not a WBPP problem, uh, but it is one that is discoverable in another way that WBPP communicates to you, which is WBPP outputs text logs. Um, there is both information that you'll see in a summary sense at the end of um, its job, but also there is the detailed log of everything that is unfolded um, that you can see potentially where there is an error. One of the cool up and coming features of WBPP is that it will allow you to resume from a point, from any point in the process, again, as a pipeline, you should be able to um, start up having done all the way up to a certain point. And that is going to be something that, uh, again, the evolution of WBPP will be allowing uh, fairly uh, shortly, I would assume. Um, some of the other things that I just want to say about WBPP is that it really is using the same processes that are available in PixInsight. So when you are using, uh, for example, um, let's just say a star alignment registration process, nowadays WBPP is exposing just about all of the parameters that you would in general need to have access to, to give you the kind of result that you would have otherwise gotten had you done everything manually. It's the same processes. It's the same image integration, local normalization. Everything is pretty much now exposed. It used to be that WBPP would actually have a disclaimer. And that disclaimer said, you know, hey, look, um, you can use this tool to do, you know, the calibration and post-processing, but you got to be careful. It's not going to necessarily give you the best result. That diminishes now with time, that sentiment that somehow you could do things uh, in terms of a manual sense and either get, number one, a different answer, which you wouldn't necessarily do. If you have configured WBPP in the same way that you configure those processes, the, uh, the answers are identical. That's an important thing to understand. And then the other thing to understand is that, again, the parameter space now is large enough that you should be able to configure everything in the way that most people do use the tool in terms of a manual uh, way so that there, uh, it, again, diminishing with the evolution of, uh, of this tool, of this script, is this idea that somehow you would want to do things manually and get a different answer. There is one way in which, there's one sense in which the argument is that um, you would want to adjust parameters to, op to make an optimal result of some sort. Let's say rejection. When you're doing uh, image uh, rejection as part of image integration, uh, value rejection, I should say, 
you might want to choose a different rejection method or maybe you want to change different parameters and so on to get a better result. Well, as I say, with perhaps the future of having a kind of resume of a session within uh, WBPP, that is going to obviate the need to do it manually because you effectively can start off uh, wherever it is you stopped and if you want to adjust some parameter just to redo that and see how things work, then you can. Uh, and so uh, I just, I think it's not as much of an issue as it used to be, but it used to be people got really wrapped up in this idea that, you know, somehow WBPP is going to come up with different answers or it doesn't really give you optimal results. I think the argument today is that when configured properly and, lo and uh, you look at the information uh, that comes out, you should be able to get um, perfectly excellent results. Uh, without any worries that there is some kind of degradation in the uh, in the answer. But you do need to understand the data that goes in, the data that comes out, and the configuration that you have set up within the tool. Uh, another thing that uh, I just want to point out here in the very beginning is uh, something that I don't want to spend time on in the other videos, uh, but the idea that WBPP relies on information that you give it. It's not only the logic and the configuration that you set it up as, but there's information contained within files. The astronomical files that we use are called FITS files. And these files have text information in their headers. And WBPP is looking at that information to match things, to set things up, to do its job, basically. And if that information doesn't exist, or worse, the information that's there is incorrect, then obviously you're going to get bad results, right? Garbage in, garbage out. So it's very important to understand where the information is coming from. Um, and that is the answer. It really is the fits headers of files that's controlling it. Though one of the, another nice feature that I'll be demonstrating in these uh, series of videos is that you can override information in the fits header if you have logic that is even better than or somehow uh, more appropriate to the data that you're working with. Uh, so there's this idea of using keywords that you can specify. There are keywords already existing. That's what they are called in the FITS header. But then you can override those with your own keywords by putting them um, in file names or putting them in the path statement, meaning you put data in file folders on your computer and you designate them with a particular uh, format, with a particular naming scheme and it will allow you to group data or operate on data in your own custom logic, in your own custom way. So that's a very important thing to take advantage of in PixInsight, and I'll be uh, demonstrating that as well. And then finally, um, I would just say that as this tool continues to evolve, this series that I'm going to be putting together now, I'm just not going to refer to a version. What I'm going to try to do is that as new things come up, I will obviously add videos, but uh, many of the, as I say, many of the things will stick around because even though the version may change, the concept doesn't. Um, but uh, there are certainly new things where there are even new concepts to look at. And so this series of videos on WBPP, I'll call it a definitive set of videos, uh, will continue to grow. So I hope you enjoy looking at this new set of videos that I'll be putting together on WBPP. And in the next section, let's just do a tour of the program and see exactly what the script has to offer today.